Let the living shout, Jesus! Are you happy to be alive? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus reign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus reign. Hallelujah. He reigns. He reigns. Hallelujah. He reigns. He reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus reigns. Let me hear you say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me hear you say Wave to the King of Kings Oh he reigns He reigns Hallelujah He reigns He reigns Hallelujah Important court Hallelujah Yahweh reigns Let me hear you say you will reign here this evening you will reign all over nigeria you reign in the world jesus keep you we honor you we bless you lord father we bless you we give you praise we give you glory father we honor you jesus we bless you we want you are worthy to be praised you are worthy to be praised you are worthy to be praised open your mouth and appreciate jesus thank you for being alive thank you Father, we worship you, Lord. Jesus, we bless you. You are worthy. 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 Jesus, we worship you. Father, we bless you for this evening. We give you praise. We give you glory. Take over. Take over every principalities and powers. Any power here contending with the power of the Lord. Let the Lord Jesus arrest them in the name of Jesus. Father, we arrest every principalities and powers. 
anyone agent of darkness marine kingdom that are here to obstruct that are here to destroy father we silence their powers we disarm them in the name of jesus any spy there oh lord father let your power arrest them in the name of jesus holy spirit come and take over come and take over we hand over this session to you jesus come and manifest your power come and put your word your power in the world jesus bring the people wherever they are hearing me oh lord bring them holy spirit in the name of in jesus mighty name we pray father we thank you for this evening we give you praise we give you glory blessed redeemer we worship you forever lord we pray let the people come those that have come already father you will bless them lord i cover this message with the blood of jesus thank you father for everything for in jesus mighty name i pray hallelujah if this is your first time being in holiness Survival movement program please let me see your hand up hallelujah if you're a member of more let me see your hand up praise the lord hallelujah thank you jesus praise the lord today i'm going to speak about the revelation the testimony of god through sister linda hallelujah many of you have heard about sister linda and many of you are shocked to hear that sister linda is still alive well i want to tell you i'm still alive and i'm still doing the work of god in jesus name and souls are still saved are still going on the testimony is still changing people people are still changing they are still delivered from their sin turning them from darkness to light and i'm very glad that you are here today to hear and then you will believe hallelujah the lord bless you all in jesus name what i'm going to say here today is a sound doctrine a sound teaching hallelujah many christians in the world today are not aware of sound doctrine some are aware of sound doctrine but they don't like it because sound doctrine is a hard doctrine it's a very hard doctrine and it is the true doctrine hallelujah if you turn to second timothy let's turn there very quick before i go into my message what i'm going to say here today if you are a doubter or an unbeliever or a sinner you will be doubting what i'm going to tell you today because it's a sound doctrine it's not for everybody the lord wanted for everybody to believe but when the lord himself was on earth there are some things he was saying and then some of his disciples abandoned him and said this is a hard saying the message i'm going to deliver here today is for sound christians strong christian they are no babes they are people that want to make heaven by all costs they are determined to make heaven no matter what the cost is they are ready to take it they are ready to go with jesus any length i'm not talking to little children here because there are some christians they are little children when you tell them something they say no i can't do it but i want to tell you what i'm going to say here today that is the truth and if you key into it and believe it and start working it on your life and believe it and pray for the grace to work it out in your life at the end you'll be thanking god for this crusade but if you doubt it and go home and trash it and laugh about it or mock it and say it's a lie very 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 soon very soon the lord will appear very soon you will know what you had in this crusade if it was a lie or a truth very soon you will know who is the goat and who is the sheep very soon the lord is going to show you your life and i pray that it will not be the lord will tell you depart from me you workers of iniquity so listen very well and make a decision today first second timothy chapter 1 verse 13 say hold fast the form of sound words which thou have heard of me in faith and love which is in christ jesus paul was talking to timothy here what you have heard for me is very hard this sound doctrine something that is very hard it's a sound doctrine 
It's a strong doctrine. It's the true doctrine. Many don't like it, but all fast to it, Timothy. Continue in it. You will see me. We will be together. Believe in Jesus. Believe the word that Jesus said. This doctrine today that I'm talking about today, many churches have thrown it away. I'm going to tell you about a sound doctrine of Jesus Christ today. A doctrine that have been wiped away by false teachers all over the world. There are many denominations today. What I'm going to tell you, maybe it's going to be a first time for you to hear it. Or you have heard it and your pastor has preached it upside down. And then the pastor wipe it away and delete it from your mind and say, don't believe. It's a lie. Nothing like that is happening. Or it doesn't matter. The doctrine I'm going to talk about today is a doctrine many disbelieve and hate it. Many don't love it. Many don't want to believe it. They don't want to hear it at all. If it's a miracle, a prophet or a prophetess is coming with power, did you see people here? But many people know us already. When they just see the poster, ah, Sister Lynn, ah, she was going to be telling you about this and this. They hate the doctrine. They hate the truth. Many in the world disbelieve and hate it. But I want to tell you, this is the true doctrine. The doctrine I'm going to talk about today is the doctrine that Satan has hid from the church. They have hid it. Many people in the church don't know about it. And this is the foundation of Christianity. This is the principle that Jesus laid. This is what Jesus said we should do. But today, Satan has hid it. He has hid it in the church. Many are going to church. Many are Christians. Many die in ignorance. It's when they go there, they came to know what they, need, what they need to do, what they need to know as a Christian, how they need to live their lives. Even pagans... Muslims, it's when they died, they came to know, they were over there, they were know, oh, so we're supposed to be like this, supposed to do like this. But the churches were not making any impact in their lives. The doctrine I'm going to say today, the doctrine that has been exchanged with worldliness in the church and in the world at large. This doctrine is the doctrine of holiness and righteousness, without which no man shall say the Lord. That is the only mandate and criteria God given to a man to make heaven. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. He didn't say without prosperity, without riches, without healing, without traveling, without being whatever, you will not make heaven. He said without holiness. So you can see how the church has turned upside down. The main thing that will make people to go to this heaven, that you see people dancing, struggling, 100 days fasting, I've been going around where we are driving to the camp, I'm seeing posters, you see people are talking about 100 days fasting, you see different Excel, you see different posters, different things, you are just seeing things that is not matter now. And the thing that is pending in, we are at the end of the world. The time the Lord is coming and the pastors are not preaching what matters now. It's just like they are saying war. There is war coming and people are busy preaching about prosperity. If you have the money and buy the car, there is war. Where will you drive the car to? You will start running for your life and leave all your house and property and start running. When you heard about war, what you need to tell the people, let's rise up and pray. That is what we need now. So what I'm going to tell you is what that will get you ready for heaven. What will make you get ready for Jesus coming. What will make you get ready that any time death comes, you are going. Death don't inform anybody. It will come at any time. You will sleep. Plan your day very well and say, tomorrow I will be here. I will do this. I will go there. Okay, arrange in the church. All right. There's a shocking death they told us when we went to the village. Just... I think one month ago or two months ago, we were in the village. One month, some weeks ago, we went to Taraba. When they heard that Daddy Rita is coming to his village to do program, one of the women that was, that was there was like, oh, we are going to prepare. Ah, our son is coming. We are going to prepare. Tomorrow, we will go out for evangelism. Yes, she slept. In the morning, they found her dead. If she is not prepared to meet the Lord, she has gone now. If she was a hypocritical Christian that would think that you can deceive man, now you cannot deceive God. 
she has gone. So I don't know who you are here today. You are a Christian all through your life. You have believed in God. You have given your life to God. Some of you have done a lot for God in the church. You have built a house for God. You have sponsored pastor. You pay tight. You support the house of God. You do evangelism. You pray. You fast. You do all. You sow seed. You take. You sell your property for something. All these things. But many of you are ignorant of certain things in your life. And that is what I want to tell you today. Hallelujah. Today my topic is sinners, thou art but a dead man. Sinners, thou art but a dead man. Turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 20. Genesis chapter 20. From verse 3 to 7, I read. But God came to Amimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. For the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man wife. But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, will thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he, Not unto me, she is my sister. And she, even she herself said, is my brother, in the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands, have I done this? I will pause there and explain. You can see how the man is defending himself by carrying Sarah Abraham's wife. But when the Lord appeared to him, the Lord said, you are dead already. As I'm looking at you like this, you are a dead man. Why? You are a sinner already. And maybe like you are a sinner. I'm seeing a sin. He was shocked. How? Because you have carried somebody's wife. This is how God is seeing many of you with all your zeal in the church. With all the Christianity you have been saying you are a Christian for how many years. With all the prophecy, revelation, speaking in tongues, baptizing the Holy Ghost, strong in evangelism, winning souls for people. There are many little foxes in your life. The church you are attending, the Lord is seeing all of you there as dead people already. Dead. Your, all your Christianity is dead. Why? Your dressing have condemned you already. Your behavior have condemned you already. There are many things Christians are doing today. They didn't know that. They are dead people already. They are shouting, Jesus! They will see vision, they will pray, they will talk, but they are dead already. Innocently, they, are, they don't know. Many of them will be telling God, God, I'm innocent. My pastor didn't tell me. I didn't hear. Even when I heard about it, that here is attachment. All this is not good for women. But when I went to my church, my pastor told me to say, lie. God, will you slay me? Will you throw me to hell? See my innocence. I love you. I really want to serve you. If my pastor will have preached, I will have changed. The Lord will not hear that story. The Lord will not hear that story. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, verse 6, I know that thou did this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also will help thee from sinning against me. Therefore, suffer I thee not to touch her. The Lord, see all your zeal. When I read this sign, I saw myself in it. When I was in hell, I was like, God, you know I love you. You know I suffer in the house of God. You know what we were doing to please the house of God. Anything our pastors say, we need money for building. We need money to do. Even when he is traveling to abroad, we should buy his ticket. It's like we are the one traveling. We'll be going up and down, borrow money, selling things, do whatever thing we can do to get money, just to make a man of God happy. And we believe that we are doing it for God. I said, God, look at me. Now I'm in hell. Father, please show me mercy. My pastor didn't tell me the way I should live my life. In fact, they were praising the way I was. But the demon said to me, didn't you read it in the Bible for yourself? You are here casting blame on your pastor. Your pastor is not even bothered about you. He's living his life now on earth and you are here. This is how many Christians have died ignorantly and they have gone. But today the Lord wants to tell you that's why he didn't allow you to die. 
That's why you are still alive today. I want you to appreciate your living up to this time. That even today you are in this conference, this crusade, to come and hear the mystery of what Jesus is doing. So that you will make your way right. So that you will open your eyes and say, Ah, God, I thank you that I didn't die last year, this month. Ah, God, I thank you. That is why God keep you alive. That is why you see the Lord is allowing you to live. That is why you see many people are living, many pastors that are having different denominations with wrong doctrine. God is allowing them because he loved them and he wanted them to change. But if you have in your heart, see what the Lord said. Verse 7. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, now know that thou know that no doubt that thou shalt surely die thou and all that are dying if you do not repent of your sin yet today my brother my sister young man young woman young boy unmarried you say ah, i can't live this holy life because i'm not married yet who will marry me if i begin to dress holy i don't know your state but this is what the lord is saying i should tell you if you listen to what I'm going to say here, and you trust it, you stood up and start walking, you stand up and say, me, I didn't believe all this kind of thing. Why did I even come? Or you are being here, you are laughing. Or you are here when they call altar call, you'll be playing with your phone, you do not listen to what the Lord is saying. I want to tell you, the Lord say, sinners, you are dead already. Sinners, as he's looking at them on earth, they are dead people walking. You can be in a holy church, a holiness church, you dress holy, but if there are little foxes in your life, all this anger, backbiting, witchcraft, secret sin, and you are still sitting on it, I want to tell you the Lord is seen as a dead person already. So you are going to choose the life you will live today. Hallelujah. Those that are living in sin, enjoying in sin, not bother about their sinful state, I pity you. I pity you. In the church today, in the community, people don't bother about sin. People don't bother about their life. Today, you will know the truth and you will be set free in Jesus' name. Turn with me to, to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. What sin is doing? What will take you to hell? What is the benefit of sin? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. What is the benefit of sin? From verse 55. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. From verse 55 to 57. You say, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is the victory? The sting of death is sin. The stink is like when a scorpion stinks somebody. That is what the Bible is saying. The pain of sin. The pain of death. Death is very painful to sinners. Death is very, very painful to sinners. But death is a light body to children of God. Because as soon as you lie there, you, die, you are entering a place of rest. A place of peace. There is no more sorrow. There is no more pain. There is no more sorrow. No more drugs. You don't need to go to the hospital. But when a sinner die, the death is like a stink of, of, of scorpion. That is what the Bible is telling us here. The stink of death is sin. The pain of death is sin. Sin that is in your life will make you to feel pain. That's why you see as they run away from death. When you talk about that, sister, you don't know where you would say, God forbid, I will not die. Why are you afraid of death? Because sin is in your life. You know that this sin will take you to a place that's very dangerous. And you are still having in your heart, you don't want to repent. And the strength of sin is the law. But thank God, but thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the man I want to talk about today, Jesus. How God saved me. How God make me an evangelist. How God sent me back from the, from the dead to the living. How the Lord worked miracle in my life. 
I don't know if you are doubting. I don't know if your pastor has told him nothing like that has happened. Then they don't believe in the power of Jesus. If they say that with Jesus all things are possible, with God all things are possible, God can raise the dead. God has the power to do everything that even man cannot think of. If dying and coming back is a big thing to them, then I want to tell you that you don't believe that Jesus is Lord because Jesus can do all things. All things. So today, I want to tell you, I want to tell you the stink of death, the pain of death, how it happened to Sister Linda, what, what I went through. It's a painful thing. Hallelujah. It's a painful thing that I'm going to share with you. The stink of death, that is what the Bible is saying here. Death is a painful thing to sinners. When you are a sinner, when you die, you feel it. Because where you will land is a place that is more painful than the pain of scorpion. Biting you, stinking you. So all my past life, my behavior, my dressing as a Christian and as a child of God, I claim to be that time. It was all wasted years. I was really zealous in the house of God. When I say love the things of God, love the things of God. If it was those days, if our church is doing program like this, you see us going up and down, you see us praying, you see us preparing, putting even rain is coming, you see us shaking, we're dancing behind the car, giving to we are doing all with our hearts. And at that time, I believe I'm going to heaven. I was sure. In the sense of the way I love the house of God, the way I buy things for the house of God, the way I bless the man of God, the woman of God, the way I come to church, the way I sing, people will be happy, the way I do things, everybody is happy with me in the church. Even the way I will be dressing people, with, sometimes if I come to church, because those days, you know, Satan, when Satan see the hand of God on somebody, it will take the person very far. Those days I can paint somebody, people say, ah, hey, Linda, I like the way you do your eyebrow. Hey, how do you paint your eyes like this? How do you change the eyes like this? Please come and do it quiet. Before they'll say quiet, come on the stage, we'll go to the toilet. I'll be painting people. I'll be painting their lips, do like this, okay, do like this, do like this. I was good in those things. And I was very happy because everybody is happy with me in the church. People love me. If I don't come to church, they'll ah, we did not see you in the church. Say, what happened? Things like this, my pastor will be praising my dressing. The wife loves my dressing. Why do you fix your weave on? Oh, I like the style. I was like a celebrity in sin to the church. I was a signboard that people would see and copy. I was not rich that way, but I was among that way you see us. We know how to package very well. That if you see us, you thought that we are from America, where we have never crossed the airport. Hallelujah. But all these things I was doing, I believe I was going to heaven with all my heart, with all my heart. I said proudly, when, when my younger sister, especially my younger sister, will be telling me, oh, you are wasting your time. I told her that you'll be surprised to see me in heaven. Seriously, I was strongly believed that I, Sister Linda, that time it was Linda, those days, how many years back, I was going to heaven. But all these things I was doing, I want you to take an example in my life because some of you are like this. A, you call yourself Christian, you sing in the church, you see vision, you pray, you fast, then you feel the Holy Spirit. But there are some things in your life, and you, you believe that, eh, God, no, God understands. I want to tell you, God don't understand the language of sin. With all the zeal I was having in the church, if I became angry here, I would scatter things. But I believe that it's a normal thing because even my pastor, too, when he's angry, we know. When the choir master is angry, it's like they are fighting. So these are people we copy from. We look at them and say, ah, if pastor is angry, pastor is scattering things, pastor will lay cause on the pulpit. He's very angry and then say bad word. <laughs> Everybody knows that daddy is angry, pastor is angry. But he will say some bad word on the pulpit, lay cause on people. <laughs> and God is still using it, they will do miracle. So there is no limitation we to copy from them. And still I was believing I'm going to heaven with the anger. Backbiting is like that. Among friends, we sit down, backbite. I still believe I'm going to heaven. False witness, we give false witness against somebody if we don't like you, we want to do 
um, bias against you in the talk. And what happened when this person will say yes? Is that even when the person says, you sure? I'm not, we will say like this. But I still believe I was going to heaven. Evil thoughts. Sit down, meditate on evil thoughts, sinful thoughts. But I still believe I was going to heaven. Is it fornication up and down? But I still believe I will go to heaven. Smoking, drinking of alcohol, I still believe I will go to heaven. Is he putting on tattoo? Fashion? When I heard about Pastor Chris Yakilobi preach a message, I was a follower of him. That said, whatever you put on your body doesn't matter because it's not the body that will go, it's the soul that will go. So this body is just like a caca. So whatever you put on it, it doesn't matter to God. So you put on tattoo, you do masturbation, or all these things, it doesn't matter. Ah, that was my best message that time. I quickly say, wow, ah, because those days we know little by what sometimes Sister Finna, my elder brother, will be saying, marking body, this thing is not good. So little, little fear was coming from their world. But when you had, you give yourself to some pastors. My pastor was my Bible at that time. Whatever my pastor said, I do. So when I came across uh, Pastor Chris Yekulomi, my friend was attending his church. And my friend that is attending the church, the pastor of that church is my friend and boyfriend. So we know all those things. So he will tell us, ah, no, not, not is wrong, not is wrong. So ah, I was very happy. Then I went and put on tattoo on my body because I love fashion, makeup. I was like, ah, I want my face always to look presentable. So I went and do tattoo, eyebrow, all those things. When we are praying, praying, praying in the church, nothing is happening. We now use uh, our friends say, you know, God help those who help themselves. Or we use our slangs. You know, God, as long as you are not kidding somebody. As a Christian, you go to our ballets. You say, since what I'm going to do in the Abbas is not to kill anybody, is to promote me, to make me have good luck, whatever thing. I will rob those things, come to church and do whatever thing. This is how the Christians are doing today in the world. You are here, you are hearing me. Even pastors are doing it. Go to Abbas, take champ to come and do power in the church. This is what is happening in the church today. So you that you are busy following the multitude. You are busy saying, what about my pastor? Will you want to say, God will send us? I will talk to you. The Bible says salvation is personal. I am talking to you. Don't be carrying your hand or your, your hand to other people. What about us in the choir? What about we are thousands in the church? We go, Polish, all of us. The Lord said that all nations that forget God, they will cast away. So your church is not a nation. It's not the world. Hallelujah. In the days of Noah, God destroyed the whole world. Not even one nation, all the world. And Noah and his, his family, they were the ones that were saved. So your church is not even how many percent of the world congregation that God can throw away. If God is ready to throw the whole world, the whole nation, for example, the whole Nigeria that will not follow the way of God, it will cast all Nigerians to, the, to hell, or the whole America. Is it your church that is how many thousands of people that you will be saying, when God cast all of us? When God take, open your eyes in hell and see the number of people there that is, is more 20 times your church member, then you will not know that God meant business to cast people to hell. Then you will be serious with your own life. You will stop comparing. You will stop looking at your pastor. You will stop saying, but my pastor, my pastor. You will not concern him about your own life. Because these things were the things that took me to hell. I was comparing myself with my pastor. Hey, if it's bad, see my pastor wife. He dressed, he go to London and shop there. Is he good, is he bad? One finger was telling me, Linda, walk out your salvation. I said, leave me alone. Will my pastor go to hell? Will my pastor will go to hell? Why is he not doing this? Abortion. I go to church, you do abortion. In the church, the choir is like that. We know ourselves. Abortion is free like that. Ah, my sister, I missed my period. Hey, who's going to? So don't worry. After service, we'll go somewhere. We'll take them there. So things like this was happening. Is this seductive dressing, short skirts, trousers that women should not wear? My pastor have never said that women should not wear trousers. We don't even know that one. We sing with trousers. In fact, we like using trousers on the pulpits. We will even go and tight it. This is how your church, you are attending your denomination. They are busy using trousers on a pulpit. And you are there lifting up your hand. The Lord say, I'm looking at all of you in that church. You are dead people. You are dead already. You are dead. He said, let the living praise the Lord. But you people are dead. How can you praise the Lord? You are wasting your time in some denomination. Putting on leggings, open blouse, short skirts, short dress, and this is what you see today in the church. Please, can you be displaying those things for me, brother? So that they will see what I'm saying. Things that is happening. These are pictures of things in the world. 
We go to America, we see it. We went to Ghana now. Daddy was like, what is happening? All over the world, nakedness, women. They tell us now they don't even need to, to bother themselves because everybody is going naked. In the church, on Sunday, you see people going to church, you will ask, ah, is he, is he night club they are going? But they are holding Bible, some old bag, they are entering church, the pastors are not saying anything. I want to tell you, the state we are in now, the Lord is coming. Because these are the things that the Lord hates. Putting on makeup, eye pencil, powder, lipstick, all these things for beauty. I put them on. Jewelry. Some people are only carrying two years. One year when I was carrying six. One, two, three, one, two, three. Fashion. I love it. Those days. Put on perfume. Even the herbalist perfume, when you go to some herbalist, they will tell you this medicine, you have to mix it with perfume because the medicine scent is very smelly. But put some perfume so that when you rub people will not smell, they say, we put that one on. So you that you are busy defending, say, oh, hey, perfume is the same. Even when you go to herbalist, they will tell you, bring perfume. So will tell you that demons work with those things. Satan loves things that he can use. All this attachment, all this powder. Sometimes when you go to herbalist, we give you powder. He say, just anybody you see, any man you see you want, just rub this powder on your face and pass. The person will follow you. So all those things that God is telling us, we should avoid these things. People are doubting. I want to tell you, there is spirit behind these things. That's why you cannot leave them. But I'm just telling you my past experience. These are things I was putting on. These are things I believe that are beautiful. My pastor those days will tell me that we should dress the temple. There's a day my younger sister came to me and told me that, ah, somebody went to her, oh, this, I found some group of people, oh, this thing, it, she was crying. I was so afraid, I went to my pastor. Those days I don't have Bible. I don't have time to study Bible. So I went to my pastor, I asked my pastor. My pastor told me that, these are old doctrine. They are Old Testament doctrine. We are under grace. Jesus has paid the price for us. These are those days of Moses' law. Thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do this. That God has abolished the law. Now we are under grace. That what you put on your body doesn't matter. That uh, the Bible says, he opened the scripture and said, the Bible says, uh, your body is the temple of God. That dress the temple. And then he now asks me, Am I the one that wrote it? Have you not seen there? Your, temp your body is the temple of God. And God has told you to decorate the temple, to dress the temple, put on gold on it, decorate it very well. And your sister is telling you, You should not dress like that. Oh, married you, you will get old. We serve a rich God. You know, all those kind of things. Then he now told me that, See my wife, is she not putting it on? If I know it's a bad thing. Will I, uh, did I love you more than my wife? I would have told my wife to stop it, but I've gone to Bible school, all these things, it doesn't matter. I have personal encounter with Jesus. You know, he was just talking, God is the one that called me. He never said this thing bothers. What bothers is your heart. Just render your heart to the Lord. This, uh, and then he now told me, this is deception coming my way. I should kneel down and carry a bottle of anointing oil from the pulpit and pour it plenty on my head. And then I rub it, and then he told me, Never will I listen to my younger sister again that those doctrines are not Christian doctrines, that are slavery doctrines, that are the laws, that Jesus came and abolished the law of thou shalt not, thou shalt not, that we are free, we are free in Christ. Ah, I was very happy. So we are free. So anything you do, anyhow you want to live your life, you will go to heaven free. I went to my toe finger. Never you preach to me again about holiness, about dressing, because it doesn't matter. My pastor say, God say this is our temple. We should dress the temple, and I'm ready to dress it, to decorate it very well. Finda cried that day. She cried. I saw my sister crying. I was like, see this girl, she has been deceived by one church she's attending. She cried and said, God, help me, save my sister. So life continued like this until one fateful day. One faithful day, I was in the house. I went out, I came back. A voice was telling me, I attended a burial service. A voice was telling me, I'm going to die. <laughs> we never planned for death in my life. I've never planned. Because what, <laughs> I was like, my thoughts was not even there. I'm still a young girl. I know I have to do many things in my life. So death was not even in my mind. And I never thought that God would even take me at that age because I was still young. I was inside my 20s. So what have I done in the world? I've not even enjoyed my life. You know, youth, that is our world. When people say you would die, so die where? 
no, I've not even finished my school yet. I need to work, I need to marry, I need to settle. So our minds is like that. We the youth, we don't die now, we have to enjoy. So sit and remove death from our mind. That's why many youth are not prepared to meet the Lord. Because they still believe that according to age, that is how God kills, that is how death carry people. Even when they see youth are dying, they don't bother. So my thought was like that, that ah, I will not die now. So, but when I went to this burial service and I had the, this voice spoke to me, I was a little bit afraid. I got home, I was there. That was on the 14th. Then I slept in the 15th of February. I woke up in the morning. When I woke up, I noticed that I was not breathing well at all. I was like, ah, ah, where is this breathing coming from? Why, why am I not breathing well? I was just disturbed. Why am I not breathing well? Then, I called on Finda. I shouted at her from my room. She rushed into my room. She asked me, why are you shouting? What happened? Then I told my younger sister. I said, I'm dying. I'm not breathing well. I'm choking. It's like something is strangling me. I'm, I'm choked. Inside is tight. Like, like somebody has serious cold that you cannot breathe well. Ah, but this thing was not happening to me. Then she now said, okay. Then leave the room, leave the bed, come down from the bed, let's go to the parlor, get fresh air, and let's see, maybe you'll breathe all this thing. So I agree with her. So I throw my two legs to get up from my bed, then I fall down. I noticed that my legs were not carrying me. They were like paper under me. I noticed there was no strength to even hold me to stand. Then I fell down. Then when I fall down like this, I started crying. I was looking at her that, did you see? Like I was looking at her like, my leg cannot carry me again. Something has happened with me. Something has gone wrong overnight. What is happening to me? Then immediately I started bringing out those kind of foamy saliva. Ah, she was afraid. She now called the other people in the house, our brothers and friends that were there, and said, please, you people should come. Come, bring water. Something is going on with Linda. They rush into my room. Everybody, Linda, what is that? I cannot even answer their question. What happened? What did you eat? What is wrong? What is it? Linda, talk to her. I was just telling them, I'm dying. I was sweating. They started praying. Finda entered into prayer, cover her head. She tied her head, begin to speak in tongues, begin to pray. Others were just following her because all of us in the house, we are just satanic people. My younger brother that was binding demon have a dreadlocks on his head already. So I don't know which demon was he binding. So Finda was the one praying. Hey, Father, Jesus, he was speaking in tongues. He prayed. I was hoping in her. I want to tell you, your Christianity, people are mocking you, laughing at you, you are holy. I want to tell you, don't give up. In their hearts, they know you are the true person. But they don't have the power to live like you. We were mocking Finder, we were persecuting Finder. But in the house, anybody that wants to keep money, Finder will give. We don't share to ourselves. Anybody that wants to do something will believe in Finder. If something is paining us, we will call her Finder, please pray. My head is pain. I don't know. I've taken Panarad, it is still paining me. So she will be telling me, you people believe in my prayer. You don't want to follow the Jesus. And so we are all following Jesus. So that day I was telling her, come and pray. When she prayed, I was believing in her prayer. But she prayed, she prayed, the thing was not changing. The symptoms, the feeling of my life is leaving me. I was sweating. I noticed that all of a sudden, all strength disappeared. No strength again. You know, when we go to hospital, they say, ah, this person was talking yesterday, now he's not talking. I, my heart will be panting. I say, hey, this is how people you just use. How the power, how the strength will just disappear from you. That's why when you are alive now, they are telling you, repent, please repent. Don't wait and say, ah, when I want to die, I will surrender to Jesus. Time will come, you wake up, you cannot speak again. No power to move. They will be carrying you up and down. You cannot even confess. You cannot write your, everything will just tie around you. You wish to do some things you cannot do. This is how you, you die. That was what happened to me. I noticed that I want to talk to my sister. I want to accept. She said, Linda, let me lead you to Christ. I want to accept the sinner's prayer. I want to say it. I want to confess it but the tongue was so heavy inside me I was strength but outside there's no power to push the world everything was just collapsing I look at them I was looking at their face they stand like this they were looking at me they were shaking their head they were confused Finda was shaking me crying she was crying this one would just be say hey what is happening Linda please talk to us now they were just confused Finda will be shaking me crying then this is how I didn't know what happened again to them. 
it's like I slept off or what? I didn't know. I can't explain. That is how the soul departs from the body. You will now go and face eternity. You will go alone. That's why you should not play with God. It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of God. All this mind you are saying, I'm a rugged boy, I'm a big boy, I'm a big girl, don't control me, don't tell me this, out, this, out. you think your life is in your hand. I was like that, I was very stubborn in the family. But that day, I was lying in the hand of my younger sister, like, like a baby. And then my soul came out of my body. I went somewhere, I was not prepared to, I didn't know about that place. My pastor did not prepare me to go. My pastor did not prepare me to face judgment. I was just a sinner walking up and down. I was a careless, careless soul. I was naked. I never knew I was walking. I was a dead man walking. I never knew all the Jesus I'm calling, I was not having covering. I never knew. I thought that all the anointing we have been drinking, rubbing, they say put blood of Jesus in the water, you bait with it. I thought that I am covered. I thought that I am hot. Satan cannot come close. I thought that even death will not come at this time. I thought that if I close my eyes, I die straight to heaven. All my faith and my belief, 100% at that time, my Christian life, I thought that I'm going to heaven. I never knew I was a dead man walking. Until that day when my spirit came out of my body, I saw myself among crowd of people. People that I cannot count. We are walking, going. Where are we going to? I didn't know. Where is this place? I cannot tell. I was like, where, where am I? I was confused. This place is not looking like my country. It's not even looking like a place like a wall to say I see a house, I saw car passing, I saw trees. It's just a place like a, like a place that God has not done any work. Every way, just looking, just kind of fearful way. And you know that this is like a divine place, but you cannot lay your hands on something. So as we were walking, I noticed I started feeling heat, some kind of heat I cannot explain. Ah, my body, then I get consciousness that I was naked. And I look, others too were naked. Naked, we came to this world, naked, we will go back. I was naked and I was walking with them. When I was going, I said, ah, where is this heat coming from? Where is this heat coming from? I look up, I didn't see the sun. Ah, I look around, I didn't see fire, I did not see anything that would bring in heat. But my brother, my sister, the heat that was coming, it's like the sun descend down to a bit that it will be paining, like your body is closer to a fire, that you feel that if I don't move, this fire will tear my body. That is the state I was in, the heat from the ground we are walking, our legs, my body. Ah, I was so in pain. I said, no, this kind of heat. Where is it coming from? Fear started catching me. What is happening? What is happening to me? Then, as we keep walking in this same journey, I, had, I started hearing sound. Some terrible cry, group of people. Not two people, not three people, not even hundred people. I noticed that it's like a crowd of people crying bitterly. The sound was so pitiful. The sound was so scary. They were yelling and crying. But I didn't see them. I don't know where the sound was coming from. So, but you are hearing it from far. Ah, ah. I said, what? What is happening? I started looking where the sound, what I saw, I saw a big, the road leading to a tunnel. There's a dark tunnel that is just, that is the road we are following. And this tunnel, when you enter inside that dark, it's like a hole, like a cave. You will see darkness at the mouth of the cave. But when you enter, you are not seeing the road continue. So I was like, this place is very dark. You will not expect people to stay there. Because even at the mouth of the cave, so dark you cannot see in through. So I was afraid. So when this sound, this cry continued, and I decided that I need to go back. Maybe let me keep running back to look for a way to escape. That is how many people are living their life, carnal way. You are living your way carnally. 
You use your common sense to handle things. You use your common sense to do things. That is what you think. When you go there, you use wisdom on God on, or on the angel to find your way out. Some people, when you tell them, they don't bother. Say, ah, dead, dead, come now. Oh, that will go. We'll go and settle it there. You don't even know what you are saying. So, as I was thinking of running, my legs were not cooperating with me. Then this is where I burst into tears. Fear cannot, I cannot control myself again. My leg cannot control me. I was still working with the people as if somebody is pushing me in the spirit realm. I don't know. And I don't want to go. I started, I'm going, I'm crying. I'm going, I'm crying. I'm going, I'm crying. When we get closer to that, that, that tunnel, I started sensing some terrible smell coming out of that place. Terrible, terrible, terrible smell coming out of that place. I was choking. I was choking like as if I want to vomit. This place is too smelly. It's like rotting, rotting animals coming together that have been decayed for years. And the scent is like that. Dead, like, the, like the grave open, dead bodies are coming together. The smell. You, you want to pass in the, in the cemetery, you hold your nose and run. This one, you are, you are going to dwell among this smell. So I was so afraid that when I look again in front of this dark tunnel, and I saw demons, either they appear or they run out, I cannot tell, but I just saw them standing in front of that dark, dark tunnel and in different shape and different sizes. Then I was so afraid, my heart was panting. Then I started hitting my head, I said, oh God, hey Linda, who brought you here? How did I get here? God help me. Fear! Because I've never seen demons life in my, my lifetime. It's only on movie. We believe that demons have tail, have horn. We see them on movie. So we believe they are like this. But this one, ah, I'm seeing them live. And it's like they are waiting for us. We are, we are getting closer to them with the fearful look. Some is like two in one. Looking at animal, looking like an animal, looking like a human being. They were looking terrible with terrible horns on their head, looking very gigantic. You know that this one you can't fight it. No human being can bring them down. They will tear you like when they are opening chicken like this. You see their muscle. My heart was panting. I was so afraid. I said, God help me, Jesus save me. I was shaking, looking at people. I saw the same fear on the people. Everybody is shaking. Everybody, but nobody. Say there, please let's come together and fight. Oh, don't worry. Salvation is personal. That is one of the things I noticed there. Maybe your husband and wife were there. Nobody. I didn't see any man fighting the demon. I said, ladies, run this side. Oh, women, come this side. Everybody was crying for their life. The thought was not even on our head to help anybody. Everybody there wants to help themselves. I was among them. I never think of, let me help this lady, let me help this man. Oh, no. I was crying for myself. Even when I was calling Jesus, I said, God, save me. God, come and take me here. I don't want to be here. God, I don't belong here. Jesus, save me. Jesus, remove me. I was not saying, Jesus, save us. Jesus, mm -mm. Salvation is personal. I wonder why you want to trade your soul for a pastor. My pastor say, my husband say, my wife say, my mother say. Your mother is the one dictating when you should follow God, which way you should follow God, which way you should not follow God. If you don't go to Catholic Church, you will leave this out and you will submit. Hey, when you die, your mother will not be there to help you. Your husband will not be there to help you. You that your husband have removed you from holiness, have carried you to tradition. This is our tradition church. This is how we should dress. And you are following because of common marriage that you will die. Your husband will say dust to dust. He will be the first one to cast dust on you. Then, when my tongue gets close, when those ones were in front, they were dragging them to that place. It was like a horror movie that I want to disappear. My heart is like it should come out. I was even wishing in, that, in this, my revelation, I should die. Oh, let me die here. Oh, God, take me out. Father, please save me. I will close my eyes. Pray, thinking, calling Jesus that if I open my eyes, I will I'll appear, I'll disappear from that place. But when I open my eyes, I, I was still seeing the thing. My heart was in pain. When I get close to this demon, the way the demon look at me, it's like he, have, he has known me for long or I've done something bad to him. I saw passion, the hatred in his eyes. He look at me angrily. I say, my own has finished. My heart, the way my body was shivering, the way I was shaking. All 
all I know, it was like a push. I landed on my back and he grabbed me on my leg, like when a lion will rush at somebody. Grab me like this, drag me without any pity, without anything to say, okay, let me drag, roughly like this, he's carrying me, and the way he held my, my leg, you will feel the strength, the way he's pressing you. You will know that this person has strength. This demon is not only a demon, he has strength. Strength is in him. The way he held me, I was dragging me. I was shouting with all my voice. As soon as we entered that dark tunnel, I didn't see him. Because the darkness covered him and covered me. But I was feeling his hand on my leg. The darkness was so thick that I cannot see him again, him that was dragging me. And the Bible said in Exodus that Jesus, when God was telling Moses, I will cause darkness upon Egypt, darkness that you will touch like a blanket. Very thick, you will touch it like this, like you are feeling something. I believe that is the darkness that is in hell. So thick, as they were dragging me in that tunnel, the scent, the smell, the terrible smell was choking me. As I'm open my mouth, it's entering me. I'm feeling as if I should vomit. Like I'm eating a rotting meat in my mouth. And then as I was, as he was turning me, we were not climbing the stairs. I noticed we were turning, we were going down in the tunnel. And as he was turning me like this, I noticed like the heat was coming from this place where I was feeling it on my journey. And as he was dragging me, I noticed it like my skin is spilling. The heat was too much that my, my, my skin like this, it's, it's removing like this. I was like, it's splitting, like it's tearing. I was in pain. And then I noticed all saliva in the mouth that calls saliva water dry up. How it dry up, I cannot tell. The heat that was coming out dry my saliva. I noticed I was in my mind was, which place is this? Where am I going to? How did I get here? God help me. Jesus saved me. I call the name of Jesus as they stay in the church. You will call the name of Jesus, he will appear. I never know God. Have, oh, sinners, please repent. You have been deceived. We believe that. Just call the name of Jesus. He will come and defend you. He will fight for you. And you are living in a terrible sin. I was busy calling Jesus, calling, Jesus, save me. Jesus, deliver me. Oh, Linda, where am I going to? Help me. Jesus. I was crying in that tunnel as we were going for some, maybe some minutes. He now dropped me. I landed on people. The movement and shaking of people in that dark place. Then when he, the push and the this, you feel people are there. Then I felt a flash of light. And that light is red. When I open my eyes, I notice I'm in, a, in another world. All of all together, I'm in a different planet. That is what I will say. Because the hellfire is bigger than I would say, I don't know, maybe I was in Nigeria. Because I didn't see the end of this fire. It's a vast place. And I saw mighty, mighty, large, large kind of way God made it. It's like another planet that God made, and he keep fire there. When I opened my eyes, I saw the fire. My heart panted. I was in great fear. Which fire is this? Which place is this? How, how, who kept this kind of fire? My thought is just going up and down. I saw mystery, three mystery that I've been saying in my testimony. One of the mystery is the fire. We, we on earth, we see fire boiling water. It's water that boils. In, on earth, we say fire blaze, the blaze of the fire. But this one, the fire is boiling like water. To tell you, it thick like a sea. The, the fire is boiling on its own. It's not blazing, it's not bringing like gas kind of fire. It's, it's settled like, like a pop, settled, and you will see it boiling like this, very red. When they drop somebody there, it will gum you, it will swallow you up. And I saw this fire. I said, ah, a fire can be like this. 
Then I look again, I saw another mystery. I saw human beings inside this fire. And as they are there, they are shouting, they are calling their name, they are asking for mercy, they are still alive. No one of them is dead. No one is saying he's floating on top is a dead person. Everybody is in motion, fighting to come and shouting, going down, coming up. The fire is coming with them. Some of you have gone to the sea show. You will see a beach that people are inside. The, the water will bring them up, bring them down. When the fire will be bringing them up like this, you will hear them shouting, falling again. It's like a, it's like a, 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 a sea that has swallowed millions of people. They are fighting. They are coming up like this. The fire is tumbling with them. They are shouting. And when I look keenly at these people, they have bonds that you cannot recognize. This is a uh, sister this, this is president this, this is governor this. You can't recognize them because they have bonds, their face have tore, their body is rotting, their eyes have come out, their belly is open like, like when they open somebody for, for theater in the hospital, their fire is coming out of their mouth, their body is burnt, you see them rotting like burnt animal. But these people are still human beings alive. Eternity. That is why I cry. When I talk to people, you see a sister is still putting on the zibelic thing that will take her to that place. It will be walking and be going. I cry in my heart. I say, God, man, you think your heart is strong. By the time God drops in that fire, you will regret the day you were born. You will, hit, you will hit your heart and say, heart, why did you deceive me? Why did you harden yourself when God was talking? Why you did not allow me to believe? When I saw these people living, they are dead in that place they are crying rolling the fire is tumbling with them they are somersaulting like this sinking and coming up like this they are crying i was like which place is this then i said to myself please somebody should help me because what i'm seeing i never believe a human being will be born in like this will be alive on earth Somebody will born, you can see the person in face, you can recognize, oh, this is brother, this is, but the person I'm there, just a little burnt or a burnt. But this one, my brother, my sister, I say burnt, that the face, the eye have come out. Somebody has born, the eye have disappeared. The mouth is tear like this. The hair, fire every side. They are sinking inside the fire. But this person is saying, mercy, water. started crying. What is happening to me? Where am I? Jesus, somebody should help me. I look around me a way to escape. I know there was a road we enter. Where is the road for me to go? I didn't see a road again, a gate, a door. Everywhere is dark and it's like the fire surrounded us. Where I cannot, I cannot even try to run. Where will I run to? The fire don't have any. Where I'm, where I'm standing is just a little place, maybe like a land I'm standing where I'm standing is very terrible. I was so confused. I look up, I didn't see the star, didn't see moon, I didn't see any, I don't even know what was up there. Abandoned souls. God has abandoned them. Stubborn people. Isaiah 66 verse 24 says they will look at what the carcass of those that transgress against God. Their carcass are there, crying. And God make it in a way that the fire have life. The fire keep you alive, keep them alive. It's burning them, but they don't die. So it's eternal judgment, pain, that nobody will dream of going there. The next thing I notice, I notice there's only one name that they were calling there. On earth, this person say, no, I'm a Muslim. This was a no, I'm an idol worshiper. This one was a no, I'm a Biafra. This was a no, I'm a this society. No, I'm a, a kingdom of this place. No, I'm serving Jesus. No, I don't believe in this doctrine. No, I'm the, from this church. Everybody have their own. I'm a Hindus. I'm a Buddhist. I don't believe in Jesus. Jesus is your own God. I have my own. But in hell, 
there's only one name. Every Hindus that die, Muslim that die, pagan that die, sinners that die, ritualists, all those evil society people that die, secret society, cultist people, when they die, they go and see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords sitting on the throne. And everybody knows it's only Jesus that is Lord. And so when they deport them to hell, I was saying only one name. Everywhere, Jesus. Jesus, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. We will not sin again against you. Oh, now I know you are my God. God send me back to the world. I will not sin again. Jesus, have mercy on me. Jesus, pity me. Jesus, give me water. Jesus, Jesus. Is the Jesus that is talking to you today? If you had in your heart, because he's the one that gave me this testimony. He's the one that brought me out of that place and say, your calling today and your work is to go and testify what I show you. That is why I don't have any job. Nothing doing is preaching this testimony. I am happy doing it. And he's here talking to you. As this thing was going on, I was there in a devastated mode. It's like I should carry a knife, I stab myself, let me fall down and die. I don't know what was happening as I was there. I want to drink water, even if they gave me, they give me a bottle of, how many bottles, even water, I would drink it in a second. The, it's like the water will be coming out of my body. The heat inside my body, my body is dry. I was getting dry, like when you say a stockfish, nothing is inside. I was getting dry, I want to drink. Even if I can able to eat, if bite myself and blood come out, I will be happy. But I noticed that my body inside, even there is no saliva. They will yell. People wish to cry in hell and water should come out, but there's no water. They will only yell. They will only be shouting. And then as I was there, I saw three demons that woke up to me. When they were coming to my side, I said, God, my own has finished. Hey, what will I do now? They came brutally. Without mercy, without say the way they jack me from that place, you will know that where you are is a place of wicked people. People that don't know mercy, they don't know pity, they don't, they don't know anything, but it's just wickedness. And nobody is laughing in hell. Even the occultic people, the ritual people, those that say they have mind, they kill people, they kidnap, they, 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 the Muslim that cut people's throat. They too, when they are there now, they are crying, they pain, nobody can stand it. No man can stand the judgment of God. He planned it in a way that he will pain you that you will regret why you sin against him. So you cannot stand. Don't make your mind say, I uh, will go and make it up there. You, you will regret why you go there. When they drag me to that place, they chain me, open me like that very well. And then the demon came to me. Actually, I don't want to go too deep. I want to come to second visit of her because that is what I want to say here today. But I just want to pinch small about my own. When the demon came to me, and ask me and call my name Linda, you disobedient child. I said to myself, you cannot even speak of fear. Their face is terrible. In my heart, I said, how did I disobey? You say, are you not afraid to disobey God? Then I wonder, me, that love God, love Jesus, ah, me, I disobey God. Nothing my pastor will say, we should contribute, we should sow seed, we should come for vigil, we should go and do this, we should build. I never contribute. Ah, how did I disobey God? Because anything the man of God said, we say, not God. So how can, how did I, I wanted to know, how, God, how, how did I disobey? I was in my heart, I was like, no, this is a, they have missed me for something. I don't supposed to be here. This is not the place. Ah, I didn't disobey God. I've never. I love God. Anything my pastor say, I know how we are even struggling. We will go and look for any how to get money to pay tithe, to, 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 to sow seed, sow seed in the church, building offering, mission offering, uh, blessing offering, uh, pastor wardrobe offering, all these things. I know how I'll be doing. How will they now say I disobey God? God, God, please. Then the demons now 
came and was started telling me things that many people, I told you, this sound doctrine have been hidden in the church. Many Christians is when they go to hell, they will not tell them the sound doctrine that they're supposed to have had that will have taken them to heaven. But it will be too late that your pastor didn't teach you, didn't tell you. That side was hidden in your church. You were only carried by prosperity from January to December. This is your year. Kill Satan, bind Satan, fall and die. And anointing service, washing legs. Oh, 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 prosperity. Next week, prosperity. This is your till you prosperity. Die. You Next week, prosperity. This is your till you die. You didn't know you didn't about know salvation, holiness, righteousness. You didn't know how Christians be like. Many, many are of you are choosing. That one is settled. I know many have gone already. Many Christians are trooping to hell because the doctrine that will save them has been hidden. See what. I'm telling you now, I believe I was going to heaven, but I found myself in hell and see what the demons were saying to me. Then the demon said to me, you, were, you die in your sin. Then I know that this is my soul. Die? How comes? The thing flashed on me. I was struggling. I said, so this thing, so I die. So I'm dead. So I'm dead. God. Hey! If hits me seriously now i see what my sister was saying you will stand alone linda you will go alone nobody will help you be sober with jesus my sister will be crying linda sober with jesus you don't know where you will die you will be there alone. nobody will help you the team play now for my high i was standing alone nobody was there even she was not there i was standing alone now facing this demon then the demon said to me, there are some sins you were doing, you were committing. You know they are sinful, but you didn't repent of doing them before you die. And there are some sins that you were living in, you were committing. You say you didn't believe. We will make you to believe it here today. And they laugh. And then the demon said to me, the air that you die with that was on your head, and that is perfect, I, my hair, all the time, I must put attachments, even if, if, if we won't cap. I was not proud of my natural hair. If I palm my hair, little things, I must find a way to knot, maybe look for all expression, just get away to just knot it. I just believe in at attachment, expression, we won't cap, all these things, I should put them on my head. So when the demon now told me, the hair that you die with on your head, then he asked me, is it your natural hair? I kept quiet. Then he asked me again to mock me. All this question they're asking you is not that it's something that you need to pass your exam or if you lie, they, you, you deceive them, they will say go. They just want to know that these things were sinful and now we are here to mock you. We are here to reveal like Espo. Oh, shame on you. You did not know the Espo. Now you have died. That is just what the demon are doing. Not that they are asking you that if you, if you deceive them, they will say, okay, go. This one did not know. No. They are just bringing your sin before you to mock you so that you feel it more. Why I didn't stop. Why I didn't know. Oh, I've made foolish life. Oh, that is all what they are doing to mock you. Because when you come to know the truth, you will be feeling the judgment more. So when he asked me, he now said to me, what did they call it on art? I didn't answer them. Then he now said, false here. They call it false here. Didn't the Bible tell you that nothing make it a lie We go to that holy city? That is how he was telling me. You are a liar. You deceive yourself. And those things is our property. Not the property of the devil will go to the holy city. And they laugh that. And then the demon say, we have deceived many and many will come here. Then I remember Finda that told me, don't adorn yourself. Don't put anything on your God alone want it. I remember my pastor. That says is the Old Testament. We are not know under that testament. These are all law. Which one was true now? I came to know Finda was right. My pastor was a gent of darkness. That Satan has given them false doctrine to teach and everywhere they are. And you are busy trooping there. Your own is just looking for miracle. The Bible says without holiness. It did not say if you don't have miracle, you will not go to heaven. It said without holiness. Look for a church where they will tell you the truth that you will be holy. You are looking for churches of miracle. I pity you. Then the demon laughed at me and said to me, that is our property. And then the demon said to me, 
Then the Bible says you should not put armful tail in your mouth, and your mouth will be saying good things. You were busy putting armful things in your mouth, and you were using your mouth to commit sin. Then the Bible says you should not mark yourself. You should not cut yourself. You were busy cutting yourself, piercing yourself, marking yourself. Hey, my brother, my sister, I was standing there. I see myself a foolish virgin. That I call myself Christian. I didn't know the Bible. But Satan, demons, was quoting scripture for me. Many Christians don't know the Bible. <laughs> Satan was quoting scripture for Didn't the Bible say? Didn't the Bible say? Didn't the Bible say? Then he now said to me again, You are Lord. He called me, say, You are a prostitute. You are a murderer. Then I said to the demon, I answer him, I say, I've never killed anybody in my life. And I was confident. I was sure. Because on earth, when they say you are a mother, you have killed somebody, maybe through witchcraft or through juju or physical killing. But this one, I've never done a thing like this to anybody in my life. I've never killed somebody. Anyhow, the demon look at me. You have never killed anybody. I say, yes, please, you people should believe me. I've never, I've never, please, I've never killed anybody. I was Christ begging them to believe me. Then I look at them, they were laughing. They laugh, raise up their voice, say, ha, 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 ha. You never kill anybody, they laugh again. And then they twist their face and point it at me. All the babies you were killing in your womb, were they animal or they were human beings? I kept quiet. All the abortions you are busy doing for married men, doing for, you are not married, you are busy committing fornication. How many Christians in the churches? As I'm talking, just imagine when the Bible says many are called, few are true. Begin to judge your local church. Begin to zoom them, the young girls. Who is virgin there? Who will go to heaven? See how they were judging me. That's why when we told they say they were judging, we are judging. We are telling you the truth so that you will see the reality. You say you are judging. This is how they will be mocking you in hell. The demon told me, me, I was looking it in the way of the world. Modra is somebody that came. My mind was not running to abortion. The demon expanded for me and said, all the abortions you were doing, the babies you killed in your womb, were they animal or human being? And as long as they are human being, you are a murderer. They were charged. I was charged. I started crying. Water was not coming out, but I was yelling. I was crying, regretting the day I was born, why I follow bad friends. In fact, why I even become a woman? Why did I have boyfriend? I was so hating myself to be foolish. Why I did not follow my younger sister? Why I didn't listen to Linda? Oh, I begin to regret why I entered the wrong church. Why I was just regretting, careless, so I was regretting. And then the demon said to me again, all these things you were putting on your body, all this attachment, all this dwelling, then the Bible says you take away the accursed things from your body. You people are disobedient. I was wondering. I look at myself. I say my own is finished. Then the demon said to me, we will start torturing you from your head down to your body. This is a place called hell. It's a place of torture. Then I now told them, please show me mercy. Please, you people show me mercy. I started explaining my life to them. I'm an orphan. Nobody was taking care of us. I have to live the way I was living to help me. Please, please, you people should believe me. Please have mercy. But I will never do it again. Please give me second chance. Let me go. And then the demon say, we don't have the power to give second chance. It is not in our power. And two, we don't have power. We don't have the power to show mercy. We don't, do, we don't give mercy. We don't pity here. We are here to torture you. Then they turned his back and went. My eye followed him where he was going. And I look at him, he carried a spear from the fire, like a goldsmith putting his iron inside the fire, becoming red. When he bring it out, he turned to me. The fire, the, the iron was so red. You will see the, 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 the hotness of the iron. And I said to myself, I raised up my head. I cannot move. I was chained like this. I raised up my head and I said, God, I will not sin again against you. 
Jesus, please just get me out of here. Believe me, I promise you, I will never sin again. I don't care what people say, God, I will live holy. God, I will serve you. God, please don't allow him to put it on me. Jesus, I beg you. Jesus, I beg you, please. And they, they are laughing at me. And then the demon say, I had it very clearly, say, don't call that righteous man here because that righteous man has forsaken you. When you were on earth, he was telling you to surrender to him. You didn't listen. You had it in your heart. He too has decided to keep quiet. He will not hear you. And then he say, look at these ones that are here. Some have been here for a thousand years. They have called on that righteous man. They did not answer. Them. Is it you that just called? You are finished. Then I say, God, God, please. God, please. I was crying. I was in pain. When the demon come, he came and put this hot thing on my body. The iron was entering my skull. I was hearing my skull is cracking. My body is pain. They carry, they say, you like tattoo, you mark your body, disobedient child. We will continue to pierce your body. Since you like, this was what you keep your own earthly art life doing. Your own life you spend on art is fashion, is worldliness. We will practice it, we keep on doing here. I was regretting all the love of fashion, all the love of worldliness, why I spend my time following worldliness, why I spend my own art following clubbing, party, all the dressing, changing, all this thing, boyfriend. I was so, I was regretting why I choose the lifestyle of the world. Vanity upon vanity. When the demons finish with me, when they touch on me, when they finish with me, I was hopeless. I look at myself, all the bleaching, all the falseness. I look at the body of Linda. Is this all the time I took on her, the money I spent? So this is the end of the product. So this is vanity. Why did I do my life like this? Why did I waste my ears like this? Why I did not follow God? I started crying. I started crying. The demon tortured me. When they opened my leg like this, the demon say, as when you were in the hospital, they will give you something that will kill the pain. Now we will practice the same way of abortion here. I will be, until I get tired, I will be inserting into your private part. I will be choking it. I thought it's a play. One thing about this demon, whatever they imagine they will do, anything they want to do, they are free to do it to your body. And then the other thing I noticed, no matter how your body is cut off, no matter how they pierce it out, no matter how they use knife on you, you will think that, okay, by the time they use knife and tear me, ah, I will die or my spirit will disappear. I notice, is, is it a magic form? Is it a spiritual thing? I cannot tell. But when they tear you, when your body pieces like this, you will see yourself scattering in pieces, in parts. But how the hand will grow again, how the head will close, how the mouth will gather again, you yourself will be surprised how your body is coming together again, and then they will redo the thing again. And when they finish torturing again, how your body will gather again, I now say, No, God, my punishment is more than my sin. God, please. I beg you. Please don't be I beg you. God, please, I will never 
pass it again. I make promise with Jesus. I cry to Jesus. I told Jesus, I said, God, believe me, I will never see it again. God, I will never see it again. When I call on Jesus for long, I didn't hear anything. I didn't see him. I started blaspheming God. I said, God, you are a wicked God. You deceive us. You say you will never live on the end of us because God, you know I was the orphan. Nobody to help me. Now I was living like that. God, you know my pastor did not tell me. Jesus never abandoned me. Oh, God, I hate you. God, I hate you. Why are you doing this to us? Our punishment is more than our sin. God, she was busy. I beg you, please. The demon was laughing. I said, yes. He was happy with me. He was like, yes, this is your place. This is where you are. I regret. I said, God, I will not do it again. And then the devil said to me, you are finished. You are finished. Then I said, God, please, keep me second chance. Let the world, let me come back and bear my ways. God, I promise you, I will never sin again. I don't care what people say. I will do anything you say. Anyhow you want me to be, I will be God. I don't care what people say. Jesus, give me a second chance. I was there. I cry all the cry. I call all the call. I pray all the prayer. I shouted. No voice, no hear. The Lord was quiet towards me. I want to tell you, as you are hiding in your heart, the Lord is telling you, come and surrender. Stop your lying. Stop your smoking. Stop your worldliness. Stop your prostitution. Stop your wayward life. You are hiding your heart. Stop your drugs adding. You are hiding your heart. I was like that. When I go to a crusade, when they tell us, stop seeing. I walk away. I say, which can we are looking for a miracle. This person tell you, don't keep boyfriend. Don't do this. Don't dress like that. That's why you, I don't used to go to holiness crusade. But I never knew I was doing myself. I disbelieve all these things. But when I went to hell, when the Lord took me there, I now saw vanity upon vanity. As I was there, the Lord brought me out of that place. As the Lord got me out of that place, the Lord said, I am jumping. My testimony is more than four hours. Then the Lord Jesus, when he brought me out of that place, and then the Lord himself took me again, he said, God turns to hell. When we came into hell, with the Lord. The first thing I noticed again, this time, when I entered, it was dark, as I told you, very dark. But when I was coming with Jesus at the corridor of hell, it was bright. I was seeing every look and clean around the area where we enter in make himself unseen to death. I was able to see the Lord said, look. And I look at Jesus' face. I saw him shedding tears. I saw him crying. And then I look at him, I know it's paining him. When I came with the Lord, I now know the vast, the quantity, the level, the, the multitude that are in this place. Because I was able to see with the light from him, beyond by his power, I was able to see. I now ask myself, is there people in heaven? This crowd of hell I'm seeing with people, this crowd in hell, I think people in heaven, but I was comforted because when I go to heaven, the little sign I saw in heaven, I saw crowd of people, I saw people too. But when I went to hell, I saw people, multitude. The Lord look at me and say, I didn't create this place for you people. My children are coming here. He look at me and say, I am sending you back to the world. Go and warn my children. I am God. I'm not a man. I will not compromise my standard for no man. Anyone that sinned against me and had a desire to repent, I will cast them here. Go and warn the remnant on earth. Let them talk to Jesus. Let them believe in me. Let them do my will. I was crying along with Jesus. I saw him bringing out tears from his eyes. And I said to him, I said, God, will they believe me? Will they believe me? God, they will not believe me. Jesus, please don't 
sent me back to the world because they will not believe me. The Lord looked at me and said to me that all my life I spent on earth, I was not doing the will of God. I was not pleasing him. The thing was piercing my heart because I know I suffer in the church. I mean, Jesus is telling me, you were not pleasing me. And then he said to me, you are now going to work out your salvation in fear and trembling. You are now going to be as a child of God. And then he looked at me and said, a child of God should be different with the child of the world in their dressing, in their thinking, in their preaching, in their lifestyle. Everything about a child of God should not look like the world, should be different. When they stand between the world and the children, they should see them different in anything they do. So you are going to be like that. If you want to come to heaven, you must be holy. And then the Lord said, I want to show you some people in this place. So that you will go and tell those that are following the footsteps of those that have come here. The Lord showed me department of people of different sins. I told you, I said, whatever you are doing or art that the Lord don't want you to do, and you keep yourself doing it, it's sweeting your flesh. It's like, you like it. You love drinking. You love nightclub. You like sleeping with prostitutes. You like having boyfriend. You like having sex. You like, you like going to abolish. You like believing on charm. All these things. You like doing witchcraft, flying, eating, all these things. As you like doing these evil things, you are not repenting and stopping them. You die in it. The same way you were doing, they will practice it in a painful way to you. One of the places the Lord showed me, when I enter, I saw a glass, a glass of living people. That's why I told you people, sinners, you are sinners. I want to tell you, you are a dead person already. In this glass, I saw people on earth in different places in the world. They are walking, doing their normal thing, but Satan have caged them. They are inside a cage. Then I was surprised. This bottle is in hell. And these people are on earth. Then I look at the Lord. What is this? I cannot get it. The Lord now said, any one of them that die without repenting, if you repent, you are coming out of the cage of the devil. But as long as you are a sinner, Satan gets control over sinners. And when any one of them die without repenting of their sin, from that place is straight their soul to hell. So you can see the multitude of sinners in the world, crowd of people, and they never know they have caged. Sinners, all oh, your prayer, you are praying in the church, I die, die, Satan, fall and die. And you have lying tongue, you have anger, you, have, you are doing masturbation, you are, you are not married, you have boyfriend, you are married, you have girlfriend, you are a thief in the house of God, you are, you are you are doing evil in the office. All this bad life, you are dressing seductively. All your die, die prayer you are praying, you are just wasting your time because you are caged by the devil. You are a sinner. And then the Lord said to me, let me show you different things that is happening to souls that have died, careless souls that have died here. And then the first place the Lord took me, I saw this place, they wrote their idol worshippers. Not only those that are worshipping stone, not only those that are worshipping mami water, but those that don't believe in Jesus, that have different belief, different doctrine. And then the Lord was saying, different religion, those that don't believe in Jesus, and even those that believe in Jesus, but they are worshipping different things. Some of you in your church, they have, you are worshipping different things. You believe in different, bow to be different things. Anything your pastor say, bow to you, bow. And then the Lord now said that these are the ones. And I saw there, there was a stone, a big stone, like a stone, but it's like a ball of fire, like they mold the fire. And then when they put it, I saw the demons carry the head of the people, mocking them and say, bow and worship us, you have been worshiping us. Don't you know if you only bow to the, the, the God, God Almighty, and they were mocking that you were worshiping me. They were mocking those that don't believe in Jesus and say you were bowing to me. The only person you should bow to is that righteous man. But you didn't bow to him, you were bowing to us. And then we are pressing their head. When they press their head on that stone, you will hear the sound of their head frying like when they put something in the hot oil. And this is how they will be 
shouting, the demon will be pressing there until this their skull with pieces like this. And they will repeat the thing again and say, keep worshipping us. They will bow their head. You will see the head, the forehead there is scattering. And they will be shouting, crying. And then the Lord said, go and warn idol worshippers. Go and warn the Muslims. Go and warn other religions that don't believe in Jesus. That all knee must bow. Everybody must bow to only one God, which is Jesus, which is God Almighty. Tell them, anyone that don't bow to me, all secret society people, tradition people that you are bowing to stick, bowing to stone, bowing to mummy water, bowing to wood. You say this is the God, our former God or whatever. There is only one God and that is the God. is called Jesus. Is the Alpha Omega. That is where all knee must bow to. He said, I should tell you, if you have your, your idol in your house, you bow to it. You are bowing to Mary's statue. You are bowing to Joseph's statue. You are bowing to a stick, bowing to a, a, a a stone, anything they give you for power, you are kneeling down, you are bowing, you are worshipping, bow to your pastor picture, you are worshipping a man for power. The Lord say you are an idol worshipper. If you die in that worshipping of man, worshipping of stone, worshipping of other item, not only Jesus, you should be, you should bow to only Jesus. If you are bowing to other things, the Lord say you are an idol worshipper. The Lord showed me a group people I saw the demon will bend them, bend them like this, and carry a hot spear. I was inserting it in their anus till the thing come out of their mouth. It was so painful for me to see. I will like cover my face and I will be crying. I will be telling the Lord, Father, it, too, it is too much for them. Father, it is too much for them. Lord, show them mercy. God, it is too much for them. God, it is too much for them. God, I, even me, human being, I don't have the heart to look at the way they were punishing them. Then the Lord said to me, go and warn those ones that are committing the sin of homosexual. That is an abomination to the Lord. It is an abomination to the Lord. This is the sin that caused the Lord to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And now the church is agreeing for people to be married man to man. They are agreeing. Christians are doing it. Tell them they are committing this terrible sin against their creator. And they will suffer it here. And this is how the demon was telling them, why are you shouting? You like it. They were passing it very hot high on. Very hot that when they are putting it gently in their anus, the people will be doing as if they are running mad. They can sh they, 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 the iron will tear them like this. You will sense the, 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 the iron is rusting and going through. I look at God. I say, God, pity them. The Lord said, go and want those ones now on earth that are following the spirit, following this footstep. If you are here, you are thinking of being a homosexual, or you are a homosexual, or your family member is a homosexual, and you are laughing with that person, you are playing with that person, I want to tell you, you are damaging yourself. You are hating that person. If you know what is good for you, that your family member, pray for him. Be hard on him, because that punishment that that person you are seeing today, what he will, will suffer when he dies as a homosexual, you will regret the day you keep quiet, you did not tell him. And then the Lord took me to the department of liars. They were slicing their tongues like when you go to this butcher, and they will slice meat for you with sharp sword. Continuously, the tongue is still coming. This is how they will cut it. I want to tell you, there is no punishment in hell that you will say this one is better or oh, I prefer this one. Every one is very painful. Just that common lie that you used to sit down be lying every time you lie, your tongue will be continuously slicing. They are slicing it. And then I look, I say, God, the Lord say, one liars. No liar will come to my kingdom. Even the pastor, the bishop, that they are lying on the pulpit. Tell them they to their heart. I don't know who you are. You are evangelist. You are a person that you lie. Lie to your wife. Lie to your husband. You are a lie. Lie to your parent. Lie is sweet in your mouth. Even to your pastor, you used to lie. That spirit, if you don't pray against it, my brother, my sister, the punishment for that lying tongue that has grown in you, you will regret. You lie to your leaders. Lie in everything. Lie in reports. Lie in the office. Lie on figures. Lie. Everything you do, you lie. Your document is lie. Forgery. I want to tell you that pain 
for lying is tetanus, is dangerous. I saw drunkards, they were given a liquid fire. I told you they did it to me. I never know that this is the punishment for drunkards. When my own, when they give it to me, my mouth was melting, they, they was falling down like, I saw my particles of my body was falling down. Like when bombs scatter a human being, the part is falling down. But I look at myself, all of a sudden I touch myself, I was make whole and still they continue so this place the Lord showed me the same kind of torture I saw them giving them um, um, uh, uh, liquid fire like acid pour it on them just imagine fire like a ghost melt melts fire and it's pouring it in your mouth to drink I want to tell you the danger of this hell this place is a dangerous place. For God to tell you is coming, he wants many people to repent. Because if he come now, many of you, you will be cursing, you will be blaming God. You will say, God, you should have shot you, you should have all those. I never know this place was like this. Now, know it today because hell is a treacherous place. I saw the place of abortionists, people that are committing abortion. The demons will bring iron, bringing part, was begin choking them inside and laughing, standing and begin to bring out the girls, they are shouting, they are crying. The, the demon will be putting sharp object, bringing it out. I said to myself, I look at them, I look at myself. When I was there, sharp object, it was putting it in me. The pain was like current, like when you touch a current, when the whole body will shock. When they put the spear into your part, your whole body will be shocking because you have never thought of a pain like that. And then the Lord showed me lesbian, lesbian place, the people that are coming, the lesbians. And then they were slicing their breasts, slicing their private parts, bit by bit, you see ladies crying, regretting. Every punishment is terrible. I will cover my eyes like this. The Lord will look at me and say, I brought you here for you to see so that you will be able to explain. Look and explain very well because I want you to see what you see here. Everything you see here. Go and tell it because man is stubborn. I have done all. The preachers have preached all, but man is still living in sin. Now I want them to see this hell. That's why I brought you here. Can you see the love of God? Your pastor will say nobody can die and come again. God said they have preached. Righteous preachers have preached. People are still sinning. They have preached the Bible. How many years you go to church? They have tell you sinning, stop sinning, but nobody stop sinning. Now God is taking people to hell to come and tell you now the reality of this. Since you, you are taking the Bible like novel, you are not, now let somebody act it for you like a movie so that you will believe. That is one of the reasons. You are here doubting. And then the Lord Jesus took me to adulterous department. You will see a sharp object of a snake. The snake having tongues on his body. It will pass through their vagina, through their private parts, both man and a woman. The man it will pass through the anus like this. When he's climbing into their tummy, the blood on the, the, the snake will tear them like, like when you are using scissors to cut a cloth. It will tear them, come out of their mouth. It will repeat again, God, it's a painful thing. It's like you are in a theater and the, and the doctor is tearing you without giving you any environment. You are lying down like this. The doctor is using knife, tear you from your mouth, from your chest, right down. Just imagine how that pain will be. That is what is happening in hell. And then the Lord showed me the, the, the place of witchcraft. The Lord showed me these people are busy biting their body. They are busy. This is their own punishment they give them. Demons were standing there with spear. Anyone that stopped biting, he said they would pierce the person. So it was continual biting, biting. Then I said, which department is there? Then I saw it, witches and with a witchcraft department. You that Satan have deceived that we are ruling, hey, we will take all. Any witch that died, they are there. They are regretting. And then the deep, Jesus said to me, when they were on earth, they like eating human beings. 
They like drinking human being blood. They turn my children to meat, to chicken. Now it is their time to eat themselves. Let them feel the pain of eating other people. Now they are eating themselves and it's an endless pain for them. They are standing inside fire like a pool of fire, burning them and the demon is telling them they keep on jacking their flesh. They are crying, regretting why they didn't confess on earth, why they did not forsake witchcraft, but they hide it and now the time have come, they are suffering there. So if you're a witch here, you think you are doing well, you are working for Satan, he is giving you mark, he is giving you promotion, you are destroying churches, you are killing children of God, I pity you. You are deceiving yourself. Your torture, your punishment, you will regret the day you, you follow Satan. And I, then, as I was going, I had a young child calling on Jesus. Jesus, show me mercy. I turn, I look at a child. I surprised, I was surprised to see a child in hell. Because on earth we believe that children of the age of uh, six, seven, eight, all this kind of age, they say, oh, this was like seven years, this was like eight years. When they die, they'll go to heaven. But I was surprised to see a child like that. And then the Lord Jesus know that I was confused because, ah, God, you are a merciful God. These are little children. What have they done? Then the Lord asked him for me to not to judge him as a wicked God. I want to tell you, anyone that is in hell, there is a sin that carried that person there. Then the Lord asked him, son, what brought you to hell? He now said, I'm a wizard. My grandmother initiated me into witchcraft, and I killed three people before I died. Then the Lord now said, do you see, kill three people as a child like this, wasted their life. Go and warn parents that are caressing their children. Go and warn those ones that are initiating these children that they don't love these children. Because I am God, I am not a man. Any man that sin against me, that man will be perished. Any child that choose to join Satan, choose to be a witch, follow Satan and begin to do evil, when that child dies, no matter the age, the child is going to hell. The age of accountability. The child has reached that age of knowing bad and good. That is what Jesus said. Judgment has started for that child already. So parents that are not teaching their children the way of God, leaving them to rule their life, tell them any child that has reached the age of accountability, a child that knows this is good, this is bad, tell them that child, judgment is waiting for that child. So if you love your child, you want your children to come to heaven with you, begin to teach them now. Don't play with them when they are lying, when they are stubborn, when they are doing sin. Don't play with them. Don't play with them because playing with them, you are taking them to hell. All this time they are wasting on Game Boy, wasting on all this movie. You are watching them, looking all this wrestling, all this thing. You are laughing with them, play with them. You don't love these children because those things have spirits and God will not allow them because the spirit of those movies, those toys, those demonic things they are watching, we enter there. That's why children are very stubborn. And no stubborn child will go to heaven. That is what the Lord said, I should tell you. And then the Lord Jesus showed me a friend. My friend in hell. My friend died two years before I get converted. And we believe she has made heaven because the father, her father was a, a, a father is a, is a, is a, is a reverend. He's a big pastor in our country. They have a big church. And we believe as a pastor daughter, she has made heaven. So when I saw this person, I didn't know she was the one. But when this person came out of the fire and called my name and said, Linda, I was surprised. I cannot remember my, I cannot recognize my friend. I cannot say this is my friend. I cannot, this is gifty. I cannot. Even if they pay me millions or they say guest, I cannot get. Because somebody was standing before me like, a, like, like an animal, like a born, born animal, the face. It's just looking the shape of a human being, but I can't see the face. All has been roasted like this. It was like that. And then he was talking to the Lord. And then he called my name, Linda, please beg the Lord for me. Lord, please have mercy on me. I was concerned. Who is this person that knows me in this, this, this place? What, what is happening? I was keeping quiet. I was afraid. Then he now, she called her name and said, Linda is gifty. Give to your friend. Linda, since I died, I came here. I'm not resting. Please tell Jesus to help me, to save me, send me back. Ah, Gifty, you are in hell. I started crying. I cry. I imagine what we are saying. Oh, she has gone to be the Lord. Ah, the father was preaching that day. My daughter is resting in the bosom of God. Ah, 
gift you, you are here and your people on earth they didn't know they are busy saying you have gone to meet the lord because she died of sickness she have gone to rest no more pain again oh gift you have gone we were in the burial service so gift you are here hey i started crying there are many people you are celebrating they're in heaven many pastors and bishops they're in hell you are in, they're in hell I was shocked. I wish the father know that that preaching, that healing, my daughter have gone to heaven. Let him know that the daughter is here. And then my friend said to Jesus, then when you keep on pleading, the Lord said to her, it is too late, my daughter. But you can send a message to your father. Then he said to me, he said to Jesus, Jesus, if you cannot bring me out of here, if my own has finished, please, let my father come here. Let my father come here, please. Because he's the one that did not treat me the way I should go. He was the one that was buying all these things for me. He was the one encouraging us in sin. He's the one that was preaching to us. God, let my father come here. Please let my father come here. My father is finished me. Let my father come here. And then the Lord Jesus look at me and say, Go and warn all the pastors that are turning my church to their family property that they have training their children to rule the church in the way of the way of the devil that they have made their children sinners in my house and they are compromising they have turned the church to their family property go and tell the pastors that are not training their children in the way of God that they will suffer it and now go and tell him he has sent his child to hell a preacher that will send people to heaven he is not qualified to be a pastor a pastor to send people to heaven any pastor is any people to hell he say a gentle of darkness i don't know those pastors and now my friend was crying and then when the lord looked at my friend my friend was looking at us i look at my friend and when the, the lord jesus said to my friend it is too late my daughter as soon as he said like this it's like a wind like the fire is the, the fire is is taking the command of god as the Lord say, it is too late. The fire will come like a cloth. We grip the person and carry the person again. I saw my friend drawing, drowning in the fire. And he was a leader, don't leave me here. I said, God, what am I seeing? God bless you, have mercy. God bless you, have mercy. Then the Lord Jesus said to me, go and want those that are on earth for us. It is finished and then we keep on walking as we keep on walking there is a place the Lord stood there he didn't say anything to me I was still crying for my friend what I was seeing I said Lord I have seen enough this place is very terrible God please God, please, please let me leave this place. Because what I was seeing, nobody will see human beings like this. And that person will be happy. Even him, the Lord Jesus is crying. But he's seeing the way his children are suffering. The Lord say, I made this place to torture Satan. I put all the anger here to torture Satan. This is not the place for my children. But they have decided to follow their enemy. They are hating me. And me, anyone that don't love me, I will cast them away from me. This is not their place. See how they are suffering. This suffering is for Lucifer and the fully hated. I am telling you, you are just sharing the punishment with Satan. And then as we keep moving, he stood a place, he stood somewhere. Somebody came out from that place again. How did, how, I don't know, God is wonderful. I cannot, I cannot question, I cannot ask, I don't know. But anywhere you stand like this, the person that you want that person to come out, how the person will come out in that millions and thousands and cross in the, in the midst of the people, somebody will just come out and stand before him. And then as we are standing there, a being came out from the fire and kneeled before him. I want to tell you, even when they are in hell, when they come out, they can't, you can't stand before the Lord. They are kneeling down. <laughs> and then the person kneeled down for like a second. 
And then the person said to me, my daughter, please, I had it. My daughter, who is this? I cannot remember my mother again. I cannot recall her again. I was, what did I hear? He said to me, my daughter, since I die, I'm not resting because I didn't know Jesus. But now I believe in Jesus. Please beg Jesus for me, my daughter. It was a sword in my heart. It was a pain in my heart because I see myself. My mother has been a Muslim. All of us stayed together in the house. And me, I've been a Christian. I've never preached to my mother to come to Christ. I saw the wickedness in me when I saw my mother. And then I look at Jesus with all my pity, with all my heart, with all my desire. Jesus, no, this one, he touched me. I held his leg like this. I said, God, please, if you can answer anything, answer my prayer. Please answer my request. Please don't leave my mother here, I beg you. Take it on me, God. We never preach to her. Jesus, now she has no you, please. Jesus, please, I want my mother to go back to this place, I beg you. And then the Lord look at me and say, go and warn the Muslims. I am their God. I love them, but they don't believe in me. Any Muslim that die without believing in Jesus, tell them they will come here. And then he look at my mother and say, my daughter, it is too late for you. You can send a message to your siblings. I said, no! My mother, please. Jesus! My mother, I beg you. Please, I want to go back, I beg you. Then my mother said to me, tell your sisters not to come here. Tell my brothers not to come here. Since I came, I have not been resting. Jesus, please show me mercy. And the Lord said to me, the Lord look at me and said, it is too late. I saw my mother going back. I never saw my mother again. She was going and she was calling my name. My daughter, and I said to myself, "Who oh, let you know? I love my mother so much, and now she suffered to train us. Ah, it was a painful thing to me. The Lord looked at me and said, "Let us go." We left that place. We leave the place. The Lord showed me pastors. I don't have time for those ones. The Lord showed me different things. And then we came out. When we came out, the Lord said, You will think I'm a wicked God by what I've shown you. But let me say, carry you to the place where you will see man sitting with the devil, agreeing with the devil, seeking devil counsel, loving the devil and hating me. Let us go. Then we went to a place, a very big place. I saw some people sitting on the table. As they were sitting on this table, a very long table, I saw a man sitting. And then that was my first time. I've never seen Lucifer in my life. And then Jesus said, this is Lucifer. Many of you say, devil have all, devil have this. Maybe he changed in many ways. But this one the Lord was showing me was a smart person sitting down, like a human being intelligent, sitting down. And then I saw people sitting around the table, like conference hall. And then the Lord said, these are rulers of the world. These are leaders of the world. These are people that are giving laws, rules, and regulations that is governing the world. That's why you see many sinful things that the laws are coming up is to sin against me. They seek counsel from Satan. These are celebrities. These are the people Satan give them fashion, sinful fashion. Satan knows I hate nakedness. And he will tell the 
celebrities to go naked. And when they go naked, since you people are copying them, are they, are they your role model? You don't model me. You don't look up to me as your Lord. You model naked people. And they, when they come naked, you copy their style. Nakedness has filled all over. And even in the house of God, my house has been filled of nakedness. I am not a naked God. I can't be all naked dead in my eyes. Then the Lord began to tell me things. Then the Lord showed me, took me to a place. And then I saw some group of people as the way you are sitting like this. I'm going to end up here now. And then I saw some group of people sitting. And then when they were sitting and standing, sorry, they were standing by a partition, a group like this. And then the first group I saw, then I now saw them holding gallons in their hands. And then I saw some of them wearing different costumes. Then I now asked the Lord, what is this? Who are these people? Then the Lord showed me these are different section of people in the world. You have the medical department. That's why many hospitals, please be praying. Some of these people are evil people. You say you have business people. You have uh, uh, you have secular people. God was showing me. Then the first group the Lord showed me these are preachers of the gospel in different ranks. The Lord Jesus told me call them in any, any title you want to call them. They are here, both male and female. They were standing, and when they were standing there, and now told the Lord because I was really ready. What I have seen in hell, the torture that people, innocent people are suffering in hell. Some of them when I say innocent, they were believing their pastor is telling them the truth and they obediently follow false doctrine believing that is the true way and now they landed in hell. So when the Lord was showing me I was very desperate that God, oh, whatever these pastors are doing in the secret Lord, I'm ready to expose let, let me know everything that is happening here. Then the Lord Jesus, as they were all in the gallon, then I asked the Lord now to me, in that gallon there are human blood. These are sacrifices they have done, killing members, killing people, and they are bringing it to come and give. And they will, they will pour the, the blood in the drum, and they were standing. And in this place, I saw the devil giving them dirty water to wash their face. As they washed their face, they started... Then I asked the Lord, I said, why are they using this dirty water to wash their face? And then the Lord said, it's to see vision. That is what is happening today, prophecy, all these things. And then the Lord, then I now saw them drinking something. And then they were drinking a bloody substance. And then I now asked the Lord, what are they drinking? And then the Lord now told me that this is, this is a death, it's a blood. They are drinking, it's a covenant. And then in that place, Satan was giving them order to go and deceive. And Satan now give them different things. I'm stopping here. The, the devil now was giving them things to go and perform signs and wonders that you and you people are using some people are using he give them handkerchief he was giving them an um, band he was giving them invisible gloves he was giving them soap he was giving them scent he was giving them oil giving them different things then i asked the lord what are these things the lord said these are the things they are giving in the church for signs and wonder my children faith are on them and the lord was saying giving them all this comb giving them apron giving them cloths giving them sweets giving them and make up all these things and i was like god so these things are not for me because even me i used to wear a band in my hand i believe in calendar for our pastor i believe in some of the things that will give us handkerchief we'll soak it in the water we're drinking the lord said i am not the god of handkerchief i am not the god of april i'm not the god of all these things they are giving you in the church for substance for power for 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 healing i say prayer is the key there is no different there's no barrier between me and anybody and the lord showed me like this and then the Lord sent me back. When the Lord was sending me back, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, who will believe me? Because my church, you have condemned it already. What they are doing there is not of God. And then the Lord told me that I have established a movement on earth, and the movement is called Holiness of Our Movement. You are going to join them. The man that is on earth representing me is my son. Whatever he's telling you, believe it, practice it. You'll be there waiting for me for, good, for heaven. So when I came back, I joined the movement. This is the movement I'm talking to. We are here today. So I am here. I'm running you know, please don't be on our feet. Now you have heard what the Lord has said. You have seen what took Sister Linda to hell. All this lying, all this fornication, all this makeup, drilling, all this evil dressing, all these things that is bad. And all these things that God said, I am not the God behind all this substance. In your church, they have given you comb, they have given you cream, they have given you water, they have given you oil for miracle. If you know if the Lord come now or you die now, you are not perfect and you are a Christian, but you didn't know that some of the things you are doing 
doing, putting on your body, dressing naked. We take you to hell. Wherever you are, let me see your hands up. The Lord is here to show you mercy. If you know you have sinned against God, you have backslidden, you were a holy person before, but now you are a sinner. Please begin to come from very fast. Let the Lord come and punch you. You have done abortion in your life. You are committing fornication. You are an robber. You have joined secret society. You are in a cult. You have done evil. You are taking drugs. You are smoking. You are selling it. You are taking alcohol. These are things that will take you to hell. Don't go without asking God to punch you because it is not the rain. You can go. You, the rain will, will continue. But your soul, if you die this night, where will you go? Wherever you are, you are a sinner. You want to give your life to Jesus. Please come in front quickly. Let the Lord show you mercy. You, are, you have been doing. You are a divorcee. You have remarried. You are in a second marriage. The man you are calling your husband, he have his first wife. The Lord say you are a, you are a prostitute. You are a adult. You are a sinner. You are a man. The woman have married before. You know, first husband is still alive. You did not bother. You went and remarried that woman. The woman is a prostitute. Please come and tell the Lord. God visit me this night. Jesus visit me this night. Are you a witch? They have initiated you. You have done evil. Now you have known that a witch will not go to heaven. A little child, you are flying. You have killed many. Come and tell the Lord to show you mercy. Come and tell the Lord, Father, show me mercy. Or you are carrying anointing or you believe in all those things they are giving you in your church. You have been drinking a bloody saucer they call blood of Jesus. All these things they will give you a prod. All these things you are wasting your money in the wrong way, wrong church. Come and tell the Lord, Father, show me mercy. Delete my name from the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. I don't know all these things. Oh God, thank you for today. Father, I never know trousers is not for women. We've won. We should not put on with all. I should not put anything that is changing the natural texture of my hair. Oh God, show me mercy. Father, show me mercy. All this seductive dressing that men will see your breast, see your short, see your, your back, see your leg and they will sleep with you. You are, a, you are an evil person. Tell the Lord, please, my sister, my brother, Husband and wife, you are not together in peace with your wife. You wife, you are not respecting your husband. The Lord rebuke those wives. You are not submissive to your husband. You don't care for your husband. You are disrespecting your husband. You are fighting the husband. You husband, you are beating your wife. You have girlfriend. You are not loving your wife. You are not spending on your wife. You are not taking care of your wife. Your wife is crying to the Lord against you. The Lord said that cry is standing against you. Come and ask the Lord to forgive you. You are a pastor. You are an evangelist. You are not preaching this holiness. You are not preaching grace, prosperity that is not all the doctrine that is a part of the doctrine teaching them to observe all things come and tell the Lord Father today I will be teaching everything I will teach what matters tell the Lord to show you mercy tell the Lord to show you mercy Thank you, pray open your mouth and pray confess your sins ask for the mercy of the Lord upon your life this is a wonderful opportunity the Lord has given you to reconcile with him so that we will not end up in hell. Mercy, oh Lord, mercy, oh Lord, Father, show us your mercy. Mercy, oh Lord, Jesus, show us your mercy. Mercy, oh The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805 you can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish 
for have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior. I believe. You died for my 
purchased me with your blood. You are my Lord and my Savior. You left your throne above and took up the form of a servant for my sin. Savior. Jesus, I will.